welcome everybody back to Truth Be Told Bible Study. We are so excited. We got a special treat today. Um, I don't know if you can tell, but it's all ladies. Um, it's ladies night. And we are excited just to uh, talk about um, worship. And I want to introduce uh, who we have here with us tonight. My name is Latora Saxton. I'm an evangelist uh, by title, but I think we all are because we all should be sh sharing the love of Christ um, and evangelizing and talking about all those wonderful things that Jesus has done for us. Yeah. But at this time, I want to introduce, um, I want to pass it to Tiffany. She's, um, or just spotlight Miss Tiffany uh, Martin. She is our worship leader and minister in music and she is just a, a delight. Um, she's bold and her voice is amazing. And so if you haven't heard her on Sundays, tune in because uh, she's just amazing. And she is uh, has the word of God just written all over her heart. And what I love about Tiffany is um, she is theatrical. And so in most of her Bible study uh, and her Bible sharing moments, uh, she is a person that is going to make this, make the word of, of God come to life. And I just enjoy it. It's like watching a cartoon or watching a soap, soap opera or something great on television. So want to say shout out to Tiffany. Thank you for being here. Hi, and, everyone. Uh, <laughs> and then also want to shout out to my amazing, our new friend uh, and sister in Christ, the amazing Michelle Lutz. I am so juiced at what is about to happen here today. Like, I don't know what God is doing, but like, I'm so excited. Let me tell you a little bit about her background. Uh, and we're going to, it's just good. She <laughs> is, when I say a worshiper on like, you look at her and she's so tiny. And then all of a sudden these belts of, of beautiful uh, lyrics and Oh my gosh, her voice is just like the dew in the morning. It gently rests upon your heart and it's just good. Um, she's an incredible leader. Uh, more than that, she is an incredible woman of God. Um, she love, love, loves her husband and they are in ministry together. And we're going to talk about that. And then also she is a uh, mom of three amazing children. Uh, and and we're just I'm at that alone, her whole uh, birthing and family story is its own testimony. And then her, she comes from a family of like pure worshipers and people that go in uh, like on a, on a whole other level. And so today, let's hope that we could like, like kind of put a bit, a rubber band around <laughs> what I feel like is bursting at the seams. Uh, we're going to, we're going to talk about worship. We're going to talk about the heart of a worshiper. We're going to talk about it being as our superpower as believers, um, and, 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 and it is just good. So with that, again, welcome to Truth Be Told. Thank you again for being here, Michelle. Everybody, welcome to the virtual stage, Miss Michelle. <laughs> <laughs> what? Yeah. Oh my goodness, Latora, <laughs> that intro was epic. I am expectant for what the Holy Spirit's about to do. <laughs> we say yes, right, Tiffany? We're yes, like, we say yes. Yes, he is uh, to him who is able to do immeasurably above and beyond what we can ask, hope, or think, or imagine. To him be the glory forever and ever. Lord, we Amen. say yes. Amen. The Torah, thank you for that. It's so such an honor to be here with you guys. <laughs> Absolutely. Oh my gosh, this is so good. Um, so Michelle, tell us, you know, a little bit about yourself. I know that you are, we met at a worship conference where Michelle and her husband um, were teaching us some real fundamentals about um, worship. Uh, but I wanted to kind of go back a little bit and talk about um, where you're from and, and what where where did you start um, as a worshiper? Um, has it always been a thing that's in you or was this thing that you had to like cultivate and develop? So tell yeah. us about that. Okay. Well, first I want to say meeting you guys at that conference was so incredible just for everyone who's watching or listening. We went to the walk to our cars together and we were just like i'm just like let's talk let's keep talking and walking because they were kicking us out of the sanctuary <laughs> remember that you're sorry so we walked to the parking garage <laughs> together then we stood at that elevator for like an hour maybe yes. five minutes yes. to an hour and um connecting with the two of you was like just one of the best things that's happened in a while it was it was like like soul sisters immediately so i just want to just tell you both i love you so much and i've loved connecting with you since then um, you too. yeah it was like you know you know when someone feels like kindred you're like okay yeah, yeah. Lord, what are you doing right now so anyway that was a really cool a really cool moment mm -hmm. um so to answer your question Latora, 
I moved to Los Angeles in 1999 to pursue my acting career. Mm. <laughs> I don't think I told you that. No, that's so awesome. <laughs> Come on, let's get to Hollywood. <laughs> yeah, long story short, you know, and, and some, of, some of the women listening might really resonate with this, but I was looking for love in all the wrong places. And I was in a deep search. At the time, I didn't know it, but I was in a deep search for significance. Mm -hmm. and um, performing for significance and performing for identity, which got me into acting. I, I grew up um, in Southern California, not in Los Angeles, but in Southern California, <clears throat> more suburbia. So moving to Los Angeles felt like a really big leap, but um, I was doing community theater and that kind of thing. I hated acting. I had horrible stage fright, actually. <laughs> no way. <laughs> But I would do it anyway, because I just needed to figure out uh, my value and, and what I was doing. And I got, I, and I was somewhat good at it. And so moving to Los Angeles, I got a, a manager and an agent and the whole nine yards. I was working as a waitress, as a server, as you do being in Hollywood. Yeah, and yeah, someone yeah. who I was working with actually invited me to church. And I, my back, my mom led me to the Lord when I was eight years old. Mm. I was filled with the spirit at 12 years old. I had an encounter with the Lord <clears throat> where I became filled with the spirit through my sixth grade teacher, Mrs. Mulligan. Wow. And actually uh, with my father, my father was a part of a group called the Full Gospel Businessmen, if anybody knows about that. And my dad had a small business where he was, um, we were praying actually for someone in our church who had a brain tumor. Mm. And we all came around him at my dad's office and laid hands on him. And my dad was praying in the spirit and I got filled with the Holy spirit wow. and got, received my prayer language. But then um, in junior high and high school, my parents just stopped going to church, stopped taking us to church. And um, they were going through a lot as well. So all that to say, I ended up in LA, ended up going to church, looking for a significance. And, um, there was a woman, so we started doing a, a women's women's meetings. It was called Women After Virtue Every Day Wave Meetings. And mm -hmm. um, there was a guest speaker by the name of Bunny Wilson. I don't know if you've ever heard of Bunny Wilson. Yeah, I have. Have you? She was just such a woman of faith, a woman of God, who um, had, had wrote a, a lot of significant books. One of them was um, Night in Shining Armor. Another one was called Liberated Through Submission. These books changed my life. They really formed me in my, in my early 20s. But one of the things that she challenged us as women to do was, and I feel like this is for some people. I just feel the spirit of God on this moment. But yeah. one of the things she challenged us to do in this women's meeting, she said, some of you are holding on to things, like white knuckling it. And you're holding on to things that the Lord has not given you to hold on to. And you're afraid that if you surrender them to Jesus, that they, that he will take them from you and not give them back. But these things have become an idol. Mm. But the Lord is so good. And he started appealing. Uh, she started appealing to us about the goodness of God and the goodness of his ways. And the fact that he is the one who created us and he knows our blueprints and he knows yes. what will make us tick and bring us true joy. Yeah. And she brought us to this place of trust. And I knew it because our spirit man knows the truth. Mm -hmm. Our spirit man knows when we're hearing things that we know are good and are very well and are from the Lord himself. And she said, some of you need to surrender these things to the Lord. And you just need to trust that if you put all of all of your life, if you surrender it all at the feet of Jesus, it is okay. And he will take the things that are taking you off course. He will take the things that are bringing you to the wide road and not the narrow road of the way of Christ. And he will give you back everything that he wants you to be pursuing. Mm. And in that moment, I realized that my acting career had become an idol. Wow. And I had surrendered every part of my life, but the acting, and I had it behind my back. Like you can have everything but that Jesus. <laughs> And he said, if you'll trust me, I'll show you what you were really made for. Mm. And listen, I'm not saying that, that some people are not called to the entertainment industry as actors and, act and actresses. And we need people in Hollywood like that. But for me, it was, you know, my way that I was going to have significance. It was my way of finding my identity, but it was leading to so much darkness in my life. And so 
I surrendered my acting career. Wow. And there's this lie in the, act, in the acting world that if you have a plan B that you don't want acting enough. So, um, you know, you're not welcome in the acting world if you have a plan B because you just aren't as hungry as all the other actors in the acting world. Well, that was a lie. True, True statement. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I would actually say that's the definition of an idol. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, and so I laid my acting career down at the feet of Jesus and, um, and he took it. <laughs> it was like a game, this little tiny um, opening to my life that he was like, great, let's kick this door open. And um, you, you can trust me, right, Michelle? You know, you can trust me. And I said, yes, Lord, I can trust you. And, and, and there's a, an unraveling began and um, my manager who was kind of in, in control of my whole career just kind of showed his true colors and he was mm-hmm. very well connected um, on both the East and West coast. And he showed himself as the snake that he was and mm-hmm. propositioned me like a, kind of a casting couch situation was married mm-hmm. with three kids, like that kind of situation. I mean, I was 22 at the time. Right. Right. And it was just, anyway, so because of, because I had just given all this to the Lord, I think, I thank the Lord that he had given me eyes to see what was happening. Yeah. And, um, and I knew, you know, like, the, I can't, I can't touch this with a 10 foot pool. I really like said, no, thank you. And I ran and, yeah. um, wow. and, and I lost my agent, my commercial and theatrical agent. I lost my management. They said, come pick up your headshots and resume. Cause that's how long ago. Nothing was digital at that time. Right. 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 <laughs> uh, and then like a week later I was driving my car and I was in traffic in Hollywood and I reached down to pick up something on my floor of the passenger side going like 10 miles an hour. And I rolled into a car in front of me mm. and in a very non, um, you know, like violent crash. It was not right. consequential as far as anyone's health or injury, praise God. But I totaled my car doing that. Oh my God. <laughs> my air conditioning got taken out. Um, so I couldn't even look for a manager and an agent. Up. So he just like took the opportunity, took it, took it from me. And I could just see that the Lord was telling me to pump the brakes on this career path I was taking. Mm. And that was the beginning of um, a longer story of getting into ministry. And so I became a worship leader at that. I was on the choir, the praise team, being faithful with what was in my hands. I was the the nanny of my pastors at my church Wow. Um, for three and a half years at that point, singing faithfully on the worship team and worship at that point in my life, the place I was like serving in church was like the one place that there were, there was no walls. It was the one place where it was real and authentic. And, and I knew when I would worship, I knew it was real. I knew I was singing to a real God. Mm -hmm. The truth of the lyrics of the songs I was singing was forming my spirituality. Mm -hmm. And, um, and I learned to worship him in spirit and in truth, and it was shaping my life and my world. And because I'm wired, we're we're wired for intimacy. And, you know, when we sing, songs and spirit and in truth to to the lord Mm -hmm. um we like you said earlier you know that that tiffany has the word of god written on her heart so i would say one of the ways you have the word of god written on your heart is by singing scripture and um, and it became written on my heart it was it was permeating every area of my life um and it was and it was changing my life uh you know being on my worship team and praise team and then eventually became the worship pastor and you know the rest is kind of history so man that's so good and I and you know even as you're sharing your story um I know that there I because I know Tiffany's background and a lot of the things that um just growing up and doing theater and performing and uh, and also having hitting like one of those crossroads so to speak where the Lord is going okay are you, what are you going to do you know and uh Tiffany can you identify also with that because I remember you telling me a story about you know when you're like I just knew I was going to be on stage I knew I was going to be somebody's superstar <laughs> and then you know you know there's a then the Lord you know says okay I want you to use your voice a certain kind of way um so you can you speak to that as well too um so yes yeah, so uh, similar um similar I was um 
theater wasn't a, something I wanted to do. Um, I was a cheerleader and that, listen, that's what I like to do. Um, and I loved that in high school. And then um, as life would have it, my stepdad um, had a massive heart attack and my mom had to become um, like the, the income structure of our house. And my mom is a barber by trade. And so we were living um, in Corona, California at that time. And she couldn't build up a clientele. She was just struggling to build another clientele. So we moved back to the Valley and um, I had to go to another high school for my senior year. So it just imagine being a teenager and having to switch high school that your senior year. And um, the cheer squad was already established. And so I could not try out for the cheer squad. And there was two electives left that I could use to fill in my schedule. And theater was, was the one that I chose because um, I remember like my mom doing community theater when I was a kid. So I was like, well, I'll give this a shot. So long story short, I fall in love with theater. Um, and there was a musical teacher there and he was like, can you sing? I was like, no. <laughs> and he's like, no, I really think you can sing. I've heard you humming. And so he would sit, sit me at the piano and he would like, sing this, sing this, sing this. And so I just like started singing, um, still not really, really good, um, but singing nonetheless. And um, I had gone to a prayer service with a friend of mine who was going to Andre Crouch's church at the time. And this was in 1995. And at this prayer service, and there was a gentleman there and he was praying and um, he said, you're a worshiper. And I was like, I mean, I love Jesus, you know? <laughs> So, but I didn't know what that meant. Um, and so uh, he said, he, he laid his hands on me and he began to pray and he began to pray in the spirit. And um, he said, no, um, he said, from this day forward, you will use your voice to sing for Jesus. And I was like, and he said, open your mouth and start singing Jesus Loves Me. And that's my favorite song. And I started singing it. I sang it like I've never sang it before in my life. I was like, where is this voice coming from? what is happening? Oh my God. It was so surreal. And so then moving forward, I still was like, yeah, no, I'm not, I'm not, I don't want to sing for Jesus. I got this theater bug. No, this is what I'm about to do. <laughs> and so um, I became like enthralled with musical theater. I was like, yes, I'm about to be singing. I'm going to be on stage. I'm going to be on Broadway. It's going to be fantastic. And um, no, I, I went to college to study theater. I was, my major was musical theater at Cal State Northridge. And like, no matter what I kept trying to do, it just wouldn't work. And I was like getting so frustrated. And then I, I met my husband. We started dating really seriously. We got married. I was 21. He was 22. And it started to create a rift because I'm still out there trying to pound the pavement, getting acting jobs and, you know, and, and trying to be in theater. And it just was not working. And one day I was just crying out to God. And he said, you have to choose today. Your marriage, which is brand spanking new or entertainment. And he said, but whatever you choose, you can't be bitter about your choice. Wow. wow. That, okay. I chose my marriage. And I really believe now in hindsight that that was the Holy Spirit pushing that choice <laughs> yeah. because my life has been so full of all kinds of things since that moment. And I, I, I was still a shy singer. I still was embarrassed to sing. I was like, no, I can't do it. People would ask me to sing. Oh, no, 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 no. And so that's kind of been my journey to where I am now. I have, it's literally been, it's been a windy road to this particular moment in time. Wow. Oh, wow. Man, um, talk about a journey and um, just having those moments of um, where the Lord says, and it, and, it, and even as we speak of it, it almost feels like a giving up of, of something like, man, I, I had to sacrifice this in order to have this uh, thing that the Lord is like propelling me and pushing me into. Um, like you said, it's like one, you know, one thing I'm holding behind my back, Michelle, like, and God's like, I, I know what's behind your back. I see everything. Like, yeah. just give that to me. No, thanks. <laughs> Try something else. <laughs> I'll fast. I'll pray, but not that. And so 
but I want to speak to the power in our surrender and in our yes. Because in that, now knowing, you know, fast forward, you know, Tiffany, you, you and your husband have been married 23 years now, 23, and then, um, and, and just knowing Michelle and some of your story, and being a part, how God would have it that he would allow you, have you make room so that you could be a part of what we call now like a whole new sound of worship music and sort of like that mama bear to um, a lot of young worship leaders um, teaching them. And, and now it's a trend, but back, you know, back in the day, and here's the thing, when we be like, I was, I was in my twenties, girl, you look good. <laughs> you are aging so well, uh, I must say. And uh, just seeing how, you know, over time, um, making that choice to say yes, and I'm I'm gonna go this route. Um, but what that has done for you, as far as like opening up a door um, to do other things um, in in career wise um, outside of because it's like you're still in the entertainment industry, so to speak. But it's a whole other lane that I'm sure um, you weren't when you came to Hollywood. You weren't thinking this is where I'm gonna land. Um, can you speak to uh, just that? Like what what happened? Like when you things started opening up for you and, um, and like this move, move of, of, of worshiper, um, in you that take place. Like, how did that, how did that start? How did that, um, how was that birth? Yeah. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's interesting to even hear Tiffany's story too. I feel like, gosh, it's so similar. Do you know, I was a cheerleader too. <laughs> <laughs> and I, and, and I, I, I know we're like, people are shocked looking at us that we are cheerleaders. <laughs> <laughs> Um, we would have, we would have been the best cheerleading mates. I just believe yes. it. <laughs> but it's interesting to look back on, on, on my life personally. And I, I bet you can resonate with this as well, Tiffany and, 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 and Latoya, you too. And I'm sure every person listening, but I feel like the Lord, he fashions us for something in, in, in the plan for our lives. And looking back, I can see the culmination of what, um, you know, he's, he's wired me for. And yeah. I think, I feel like that's just really important for people to hear and, and hopefully an encouragement, especially those who are like wondering, what is my purpose? What am I doing with my life? Um, if you're trying to figure that out right now, you know, the, the, we, we're, we're called to surrender as Christ followers. So yeah. when we make Jesus our Lord and Savior, you know, we, we surrender our lives to the Lord, the one who is the one, and we mm. are grafted in to the family of God for the great big God story that's being told. And we allow ourselves to be brought in to such a bigger picture. I think of Hebrews 11, like the hall of fame chapter about <clears throat> all of the heroes of the faith and the things yeah. that they built by faith. Um, and that some didn't even see come to fruition in their own lifetimes. Mm -hmm. And we are saying yes to such a life. Uh, to, to for generations to declare the goodness and glory and faithfulness of God. And when I think about that, I think, you know, how else do we live our lives except for just saying yes to the Lord? And I think, um, you know, I'm going to answer your question, but I think one of the lies of this age and the form we're in a, we're in the, we're in a formation machine called the world. Yeah. The yeah. world where, it says in the word of God that the enemy is the kingdom of the air of this world. And there's a dark world all around us. And if we're not careful, the things we're consuming on YouTube and Netflix and Hulu and Instagram and TikTok, they're constantly forming and shaping um, how we think and how we view the world. And we have to counterform to the kingdom of God constantly and what's really going on. I think of even some of the shows that I see that are like, oh, so like, prophetic in the spirit about zombies and the walking dead. And <laughs> I can't help but think that's happening all around us where we're the walking dead, where we're walking around and people are not seeing the truth of what's really going on in the spirit realm and how there's a lost and dying world waiting to be reconciled back to the father. That's and good. every single one of us is called the Royal priesthood, a holy nation. Like it talks about in first Peter, I think it's first Peter. Um, that we are a royal priesthood and a holy nation, a people belonging to God. Mm -hmm. And that when people encounter me, when they encounter you, Latour, when they encounter you, Tiffany, that you 
to you listening, <clears throat> you are a tent of meeting. Your body is literally a tent of meeting mm -hmm. from those in the world to the Father. They yeah. meet and encounter the living God in you. And, it, and, and we don't have to do the heavy lifting. That's the spirit of God who does the heavy lifting. But as we live subject to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, then our sphere of influence, people wonder like, what kingdom are they in? And who is your father? And you can say, well, here's my father. So we don't have to do the heavy lifting about like making somebody know who Jesus is and what he's done for us. But we can actually just by showing them the love of Jesus, introduce them to the father. And so all that to say, I feel like for me, you know, you asked what was, what was that, uh, like that moment? I think I was just in search of authenticity. Mm. I was desperate for it. And my family history of origin was, and, and, and I have permission to share this. We have such a different testimony, but my mother, um, at a, in, when I was young, she was an adult child of an alcoholic. She mm. was raised by a raging alcoholic father who would scream and yell. And it was what she learned. She was, um, she had me and my sister 21 and 22, my brother at 24, and she was a child raising children. And she would yell and scream and was very verbally abusive. And, and he would say things like, I hate you. I wish you were never born, like that kind of stuff. So that was my very formative under eight years of what I was. And we actually lived in Corona when this was happening. How about that? <laughs> Gosh, yeah, that is crazy. <laughs> it is wow. really weird. And I was listening to share. So um what so year I'm, was this? Moment. <laughs> but basically we lived What year was this, if I can ask? What year was this? Well, let's see. So this was between um 78 and 83, probably. Oh, okay. I didn't move there until 87. Okay. So this is before you. And um <clears throat> anyway, but my mom was raging a raging yeller and I would hear these things. And so, you know, when that happens at a young age, those things will really form why you do what you do. And, yeah. you know, as a high schooler, as a, as a young adult, I had those deep wounds and I had done the work to get the healing that I needed. Yeah. I have since then a lot of therapy, a lot of deliverance, a lot of um, allowing the Lord into my deep pain and, and, and literally into those childhood fractures that happened. And I had to mother that child with the Lord and, and ask the Lord, Jesus, where were you when those things were happening? And he showed me where he was. And I've, I've had deep healing. It is, it's worthy work. Yeah. It's worthy work mm -hmm. to go back and get that healing that we need. Um, but in my early twenties, this was largely why I was chasing after the acting thing. This is why I allowed some of the passes that my, my manager was, was making at me and, mm. and choosing not to see them until, you know, it culminated. And by the, the help of Holy Spirit himself, I was able to see what was actually going on. But I was being groomed in my early 20s by a really yucky manager who had a mm. reputation of this. And um, had a lot of very famous people on his roster, you know, as part of that stuff that was happening in Hollywood back then. But anyway, um, I was looking for the real, I was looking for somebody to see me. I was looking for somebody to tell me that I was worthy of love, that I was valuable. And I had known Jesus, but I was not walking with Jesus. Mm. I'll tell you, he was right there. He, uh, one of my favorite lines of a song is by, um, you guys have probably heard me share this at the conference, but it's by a worship leader named Misty Edwards. And she says, he's as close as turned attention. He's as near as conversation. He's as close as turned attention. Mm. And, and that's true of the Lord. That's good. He's right here. He's, he's omnipresent. He's omnipotent. And he's everywhere at once. And, and he's as close as just turning our attention to him. And he's as close as conversation. And whenever we, whenever we're ready, He's there to hear us. So if you feel like you're running, if you feel like if you listen to this and you're like, ah, oh, there's something on that, turn, begin to speak to him. Open your word, 
invite him in because he's right there waiting. And I found that he was doing that in my life. And, um, you know, he was chasing me. He was wooing me. He was following me through those years of, of being lost. And I mean, at that time I was partying, I was, um, on sunset Boulevard three times a night going from bar to bar. I was, um, looking for love in all the wrong places. I was taking acting classes through a, 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 a a practice called the Meisner method. And it's um, basically you clear your the, the landscape of who you are so that you can take on a character. But what I learned in retrospect was I was actually letting a lot of demonic things come in, a lot of spiritual darkness coming into my yeah. life as I was not grounded in the identity of who Jesus says that I am right. in order to take on the personality of a character. And I think we see that in Meisner trained in method acting, mm -hmm. um, I, I think of the actor who played the Joker. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Um, and ended up, you know, a lot, of, and you see it a lot, a lot of actors talking about the experiences that they'll have because of method acting. Yeah. It's really just like we let things into our lives that we shouldn't be allowing in when we don't have a secure identity in Jesus. Yeah. And in Christ and what the word of God says we are, we open ourselves up to so much mayhem. And um, I was absolutely doing that. And I remember going to my mom's house to um, iron my clothes because I was working at the Cheesecake Factory and you had to wear a white button down shirt and white jeans and a white <laughs> apron. It was a lot of white, y'all. It wasn't, was not <laughs> flattering. But anyway, um, I was ironing in her bedroom. And my aunt had sent my mom a DVD at the time. And there was this woman, it was a DVD of a worship service. And there was this woman by the name of Darlene Check, And she was leading worship in this worship service. And I looked at her and as a trained actor, I'm like, wow, you know, she's in front of a camera performing. And you could tell she believed everything she was saying. Mm -hmm. There was nothing fake about what was happening and about what I was beholding. And, you know, this was the, before everyone could have a platform, mm -hmm. which I love what the Lord's doing in this time in history. But anyway, um, this was before everybody had a platform, you know, our kids are raised videoing themselves and um, yeah. being in front of a camera, but this was before that. And it was like, I could smell the authenticity of what she was professing and what she was singing. And that yeah. really changed everything for me. It was like I tasted something that I needed to go back for more. And um, there's this there's this prophetic song. I have a friend, friends of mine that wrote, and it says, I've tasted other pleasures, but nothing compares to you. I've seen a thousand treasures, but nothing compares to you. And, and I would say that was what was happening for me. I've, I've tasted other pleasures, but nothing compares to the pleasure of what you offer, Lord. And I've seen a thousand treasures but nothing compares to who you are and what you've done. And I think that's the biggest lie and I'll, I'll, I'll stop here, but I just think that's the biggest lie going on in our world right now. And, and for our young people, um, specifically for Gen Z and the alpha gen that's rising up, they're like 2010, I think is the earliest or the latest of the, of the Gen Zers. And then anyone born after 2010, which is my daughter, she's nine. Um, she's born in 2013, they're the alpha gen. And I think the, the biggest thing going on is that there's this lie that the, what the world has to offer is sweeter and better than what the Lord has to offer. Yes. And it's such a lie from the pit of hell. Yes. And I think that generation is waking up to the goodness of who God is and what he has to bring. Right. And that's what happened for me. That was the moment for me. Um, yeah. Listen here. I don't even know how to unpack everything that you just said. <laughs> <laughs> it, was like, it was like okay uh, I want to sit with I just felt like you just sat us down and said sit right here let me tell you a little story uh, of how to get close to God and um, I mean it was so many sound uh, bites that we can take from that but um, just just how Holy Spirit um, would minister and speak to you uh, along the way and even in all the distractions and and um and 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 in the whole 
all white uniform. <laughs> God is like, I'm, I want, come here. I want to talk to you. Like, mm-hmm. like that he would have, he would create these encounters with him where you're ironing your clothes at your mama's house. Um, just to see like, wow, from that space, witnessing someone do, um, and like you said, it's different. The platforms are, are, are much different now, but just thinking back then, uh, wow, what a, like what a cool thing where we look, we can look back over our lives and see where God had these intentional moments where he would interrupt our service and say, yeah. I have something for you. And I want you to see this. Yeah, um, Latour, it makes me think like, I think the biggest, the biggest enemy of intimacy is busyness. Girl, you better talk about it. <laughs> Say it again. Say it again for the people in the back. <laughs> enemy of intimacy is busyness. And never in any time of my life have I seen it so um, easy to just be consumed with so much busyness. Yeah. And, you know, you just, you're highlighting some things uh, in my story about when the Lord just crashed in to my mundane life while I was doing mundane things. And, you know, I, I wonder how many times he's tried to get my attention, but, but I've just been busy and not willing to say, whoa, what's happening right here. And I, yeah. I feel like there's some gold there for, for yeah. us where, where can we just walk with, with host in the presence of God and asking him, you know what? I feel like there's something going on right now, like in this moment where you're trying to speak. And that we would just allow ourselves to be still in that moment when that happens and, and, and allow the God, uh, allow the Lord to just crash in, in a moment. And would be, we be willing to stop and pull over when we feel the nudging yeah. of, of him calling us close? Would we be willing to stop the scroll mm. and recognize, okay, you know, these socials are created with addiction loops, like in mind, they're designed to keep me coming back. They're designed to keep me scrolling. Will I allow my, will I be willing, because our will is powerful. Would I be willing to stop my scroll and sit and turn this off and come away with you for a moment, Lord? Because I think that's the biggest thing going on right now in our society is we're just not willing to stop and wait and listen. You know, it's so funny too, because like, um, I'm reminded of uh, these encounters that, you know, I have these random moments <laughs> and, and you knowing me in this short period of time, it's like, oh yeah, like no, new people living with you. And like, it's just like the most random things. Well, me and my husband took a trip to Sacramento. Um, yeah, I think it was Sacramento. We drove up and um, our we were in an SUV and it was actually in good health, the car, right? It, but we're, we're in our busyness, like, let's hurry up, get in the car, get on the road. So we beat this traffic. We get on the road and the car just shuts down, like for no reason. It's like, it like just won't accelerate. And we're going, what do we do? And so we call the friend that we were visiting up North and they, he had a mechanic nearby and they said, okay, take your, take your truck over here. They'll take good care of you, but you're going to have to stay overnight. And so we were bummed because you know how you're just ready to go home and so, um, so I, so then, you know, my husband and I were like, well, like, let's just figure it out. So we, we, we have to walk places now because <laughs> we don't have no car. <laughs> and so we had this, we were walking and the Lord led us into the desert, like a shortcut yeah. path into the desert. So the hotel was like, literally the back of the hotel was this, this desert and we're walking and it's just me and Corey. And then there's these two brothers walking by. I think one of them had to be about six foot six and another one had to be about five, eight. So they look kind of similar to us, like the, the, the high <laughs> <laughs> So Corey grabs me and like moves me to the side. Cause like, we don't know these people. We in the middle of the desert. <laughs> and so, but you know how you could have like, you have this feeling. I'm like, God, what, 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 what are you doing right here? And so as soon as we, we, we said hello to those guys and we kept walking, I felt the presence leave me. And so I was like, Ooh, something was, was happening in that moment. And I, I feel like we missed it. So we get back um, to the hotel and they had free um, happy hours. So we were eating the popcorn. And <laughs> I was like, we're so blessed. We've got these free chips. <laughs> so we're sitting there and 
<laughs> we're uh, ordering more food and I, and I, and I'm just, you know how your spirit can just be vexed. Yeah. And I just was like, something, we, something was supposed to happen. And um, Corey was like, did you see those guys? Like what's the dudes doing in the middle of the desert? Like that was kind of scary. And I said, I feel like we were supposed to witness to them. And he goes, oh, you think? <laughs> so, but again, we're in a sketchy part. It was like, we don't know this neighborhood. So he goes, what should I do? I said, go chase them down. <laughs> so I'm okay. sitting there. Like, I felt like God didn't tell me to do it. <laughs> like, you <can> <laughs> so, I'm eat my popcorn. You go chase them down. Yeah. So I was like, go find those guys and go witness to them. I was eating my, sal- my uh, salsa and chips. So he goes and he, he like literally gets to, um, the, the BART train was right behind the, the, the desert. And he's like, I ran into them and they were still there. And they said, hey, we missed our train. And Corey goes, wow, I believe that was on purpose. Uh, he says, do you know Christ? I just want to, and he began to witness the love of Jesus Christ to these, these young brothers. And they were like, we felt something when we encountered you in the desert. And we were just talking about y'all. And we were like, and so Corey goes and the cash that he had in his pocket, he said, the Lord told me to give this to you. And so those, those brothers were like, man, we were literally just talking about how we're going to get our next. And basically does God see us, you know, kind of a deal. And, and so then he comes back and he just looks like, like, he, I, you know, I'm still eating my, my popcorn and the chips and, stuff. <laughs> and he comes back and he goes, whoa, like we could, I could have totally missed that one. And he was saying just that feeling of like being on time. And so like, it made us think back to our, like how intentional God would be that he would shut our car down, like completely. And so you're not going anywhere until you meet these random brothers in the desert and you witness to them and show me, show them the love of Christ. Yeah. Um, and we were so blessed on that trip. Like it was a bunch of free stuff. We had free, they was like, oh, here's a move. It was back when like you get moved. <laughs> Remember that was a big deal at the hotel. If you got like a free movie. <laughs> so, I'm going off screen for a second. My, my, my computer. Be- okay. Wow. Yeah. So it was like, just so crazy how the Lord would say, this is a timeout. Um, and sometimes, like I said, we were bummed, you know, initially, like this is punishment. Oh God, we're going to spend all this money. And then when we finally got our car back, the guy was like, oh, it's just a hundred dollars. Like it was a simple fix. We thought we would have major overhaul on our car, um, but that the Lord would. Um, and so, like you said, Michelle, just in those little moments where we are being still enough um, and just being in his presence enough um, and not always like when we have our own set agenda sometimes it feels like dang this is messing up my program and God's like no but I'm sovereign and everything is in my control and I'm allowing this because I have something that I'm trying to do but you have your own will that's getting in my way and so I know for a fact if the Lord had given us a direct order like hey go here do this we probably would have just said no we don't want to do it but he was like I'm gonna shut all this down no more car go walk. (laughs) That is so absolutely beautiful. As you were painting this picture of you guys walking in the desert and these two guys and their, you know, their height discrepancy and your (laughs) husband's height discrepancy and how you guys were joining in a way. I'm telling you what a remind me of the scripture, Hebrews 13, you're going to know it. It says, no matter what, make room in your heart to love every believer and show hospitality to strangers for they may be angels from God showing Ooh. up as your guests. Identify as with those who are in prison and those you were there suffering with them and those who are mistreated as if you could feel their pain. Mm. Um, I just feel like, I feel like the Lord is so leading this conversation since we started. Um, yeah. <laughs> but there's this thing that I feel like he's highlighting that you're talking about. Have you heard of the author Henry Nowen? Mm-mm. Henry Nowen is this author who, a beautiful Christian author, uh, probably some of the listeners know who he is, but he has a book called The Wounded Healer. Mm. And um, it, it's kind of at the end of the book, it's a little bit of a spoiler alert, but it was so intriguing to me, a dear friend of mine who loves the Lord and is a movement leader. She's just absolutely wonderful. 
a woman of God. And she sent me this book. And um, the reason I bring it up is because I feel like so much of where we're at in this cultural moment, we have just come out of COVID. Right now it's November of 2022, recording this podcast. And what I found in, in my travels and itinerant ministry and the, going to different conferences is that um, many are stuck because of the pain and the trauma of what we've just been through. Yeah. Um, I just heard it, heard it defined recently that a trauma happens when you suffer alone. Mm. You suffer alone and you feel like no one can be there to be witness and to help contain. Then a trauma is formed. It can happen. And and often trauma is a place where the enemy can get in and put uh, bring strongholds in the landscape of our soul and keep us from walking forward and what the Lord has for us. And um, I think one of the biggest obstacles to moving forward and the things the Lord has for us and, and where we're going as the bride of Christ is the pain of the last season. Mm. And the Lord is wooing us to, to get healing in the pain of what we've just experienced in turn to be able to walk forward, especially when I think about this, the fact that we're all ladies here. And I think about the Proverbs 31 woman that she smiles at the future and laughs at the days to come. Like that's, that's a powerful scripture and uh, marking the Proverbs 31 woman that she can smile at the future. But how do we smile at the future when we have so much pain in our past? And I think oftentimes we miss moments like the one you just described with the Torah because of the pain. And we feel like, well, that's great, Michelle. She could have entertained angels you know, that's great guys. I love that you're talking about this, but I'm in so much pain. Right. right. I'm not having Holy spirit journeys. Like the one the tour is talking about where she's hosting the presence, sitting at happy hour. Yay. That's great. Um, and, and I have found since meeting you with like your life that you lead and how you host the presence is so beautiful. Like, I'm like, I need you in my life more. <laughs> <laughs> Tiffany, like let's hang out more because it's like, wow, really beautiful how you are aware and, and carry the heart of the father mm -hmm. um, to see what he's doing in the situations that you're beholding. And I think sometimes the things that block us from being able to see like the eyes of Jesus around us in the situations and how the Lord is asking us to be his hands and feet in the situation right in front of us. The reason we can't do that is because the pain that we're going through. Mm -hmm. And anyway, in this book, The Wounded Healer by Henry Now, and he ends the book talking about how the way that we um, that we make play make space for people is by having a spirit of hospitality, yep. and a spirit of hospitality is not just like opening our homes and letting people in and and hosting a dinner for them. Although that is hospitable and that is a way you know welcome people home and welcome people into your home very practically. Like you are, Latour, you have a lot of people in your home right now that don't belong in <laughs> <laughs> the whole podcast I hope you will share that story and what's going on with your life right now but um but I but I think it's also just walking with a heart of hospitality right Amen. that as my heart is so found in the Lord who's caring for my heart and he sees my pain and he knows what I've been through and again like do the work to let the Lord into your pain he wants to honor your pain he wants to bring healing into the painful parts of your life but until we do that, we can't open our hearts in a, in a posture of hospitality to be that tent of meeting that we were talking about earlier, to have to be ministers of reconciliation. And I feel like the thing you, you guys just described that you and your husband did is you had hearts of hospitality mm. to have space for people in your heart. And you were, you were in the desert, reminds me of Isaiah 43, verse 19, like that, that, that that God will bring springs into the deserts. Like, spring, mm. like I'm doing a new thing. Do you not perceive it? There yeah. is a river of living water, like springing up in the desert. Like yeah. springs will come take place in the desert. And um, who's to know that you are not entertaining angels? Just for it, just to show us examples of in, in a minister to the Lord with having a heart of hospitality. In general. Wow. Yeah. Michelle, wouldn't you agree too that? that starts with worship that starts with having a hospitable environment for holy spirit to come in during our worship and he and we create space for him we create time for him we carve out time out of our lives for him and when we connect with him in worship 
in the purest form of worship in spirit and truth, he starts to download. He start. we pause like, like they just imagine if they didn't have a Christ centered life, they wouldn't have even known to pause. They wouldn't have even felt the unction of the Holy spirit to even go back. And that's why it's so important for us to cultivate worship in our heart unto God, that intimacy and it, who knows the things that we're capable of in the spirit when we come out of worship or when we're in worship and the things that he just will download to us just because we've taken the time to carve out space for our heavenly father to com to commune with us. It's so beautiful, Tiffany. Yeah, that reminds me of um, just Romans 12, where it says, offer your bodies as living sacrifices, holy and pleasing to the Lord. This is your spiritual act of worship. Mm -hmm. It reminds me like every day that we're to surrender, we're to climb up on the altar, offer our bodies the whole day that hasn't even happened yet and, and say, Lord, I'm yours. I'm surrendered. May my moments and my hours and, and my blocks of time be yours. May I be uh, just connecting with you and hosting your presence and, and not just going through the motions of my schedule, but saying, Lord, what is this time for right now? And then being obedient because you're the Lord and I'm your subject. And the answer is always, yes, Lord. Um, and this is my life. Take it. Have your way. And that's worship. That's worship. This is your spiritual act of worship. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. I was about to ask you to define worship. And then she just went on and said, and that's worship, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> oh, man. I mean, just to be able um to give ourselves, you know, and like you said, Tiffany, just being rooted in, um, in worship in the word of God and, and being prayed up and, you know, it's like our spiritual diet, so to speak. And I think as believers, um, we don't always just like in our physical bodies and our diets, we just indulge in <laughs> like this morning I got up and I ate, a, I ate a lamb chop for breakfast. Um, <laughs> <laughs> the most random and I, I feel like that's what you'd be doing in the spirit where like the Lord is like I want you to eat my word and you're like nah I'm gonna just watch uh, Facebook and scroll you know uh, TikTok and just scroll and I feel like um but when we do but when we do uh God just can do some miraculous things to speak to you the the situation we have here in our home, uh, you know, Tiffany is also a people collector, uh, but I love people and I, you know, I love what God has gifted us with as far as um, just means. And we don't have a ton, but we have enough and there's always enough. There's always room for one more. There's um, if someone comes by the house and they like unannounced, I'm like, no, bring them. Like, we'll figure it out. Like, well, there's always enough. And so um, I was telling Michelle when we were sitting in that parking lot uh, <laughs> a couple of weeks ago that, you know, Holy Spirit uh, has a real interesting way of getting our attention. And, um, and, and really it is our yes. And it's, it's us being obedient and, and how we hear from God and how I hear from God is really um, just spending time with him, especially in worship. And, and, and I can work out my frustrations in my time of worship. You know, I can uh, work out some things in time, in a time of worship. And so the long of the short story is uh, I met a young lady uh, via phone and I was told, Hey, can you pray for her? She needs a village. I'm like, cool bet. We talk on a Wednesday and she's like, Hey, I'm actually losing my sight as we speak. And I'm on my way to Kaiser sunset. I'm like, oh, okay, praying for you girl. And she's like, I'll be there three days. And after that, uh, I should get released home and I have coverage for my kids, my four kids. And I'm like, okay, cool. So it's Sunday, uh, I'm sorry, Saturday, I'm just sitting and I'm thinking about her. Like she's still on my heart. Like I have just, and, and here's the thing, people, when you say you're going to pray, like legit pray. And so I had been praying for this young woman. Um, and so the Lord just had her on my heart and obedience. I was at a gala and in the middle of it, the Lord was like, text her and check on her. So I'm like, Hey, how's it going? You at the hospital? Nope. Still here. I'm in the ICU what? This is crazy. You know, I see you. 
all right, well, if you're there, you know, then, you know, you already, I was tired already. Cause you know, as we get older and we go to nighttime events, I was already sleepy. So <laughs> my flesh was like, girl, hurry up and get better. Cause I don't want to come down there <laughs> to see you, but I will. <laughs> so I said, I'm going to see you on Monday if you're still there. And I check in and she's like, yep, still here. And it's the fight of my life and all things. And the Holy Spirit on the way down, because he said, get up quickly. And I think if I can encourage anybody on here today um, is to, when the Lord says, go, go quickly. Um, when he says, move, move now. And so he said, get up and go down the drive to Sunset. Now I live in the Antelope Valley, so that's a good hour plus drive. And gas is like $6,006 dollars and some change um so I was like all right I'm going I don't know you but I'm going and in the meantime on the way down um the Lord was chin checking me like you know I was worshiping but I was frustrated I was I had my good I had my good Donnie McClurkin on you know um we fall down we get up you know stand would you just stand and I'm like it ain't it ain't clicking. It ain't clicking. And I was like, I'm frustrated. I'm mad at you, Jesus, because I'm mad at your people. I'm mad at your people who are called to love and they just won't love. I'm frustrated. And I'm irritated. And I was giving God the business on my drive down on the 14. And then I, there's a song that I like parts of the song that I sing called, um, where it says, break my heart for the things that break yours. And I was like, Lord, I asked you to break my heart for the things that break yours. And he's like, yeah, this breaks my heart. And then he said, listen, and because you're irritated, and frustrated and that's what's on the inside of you I can't use you I can't send you out and he showed me like this conveyor belt of of products like good products that could be sent out and used and then others that go into the reject pile and he said to me listen I, right now I'm about to put you in the reject pile because outwardly you are all the things that I want you to be but what's on the inside of you, because you're so irritated and frustrated, I can't send you out and I can't use you. So I'm going to have to put you in the pile with all the other stuff. And I was like, dang, I don't want to be in the reject pile. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to be over there. So what are you saying to me, God? And so in acting, I'm in acting. And he's like, and I'm going to need you to get your life together quickly. Like as moms, we're, taught, we're all moms on here right now. And you know how you tell your kids, like, get it together quickly. Like by the time we get out this car, you better have your whole life together. And the Lord was like, yeah. So by the time you get off this freeway, I'm gonna need you to have your whole life together. And so I started crying and I was like, I'm sorry. And he was like, I wanna use you, but you're so frustrated and that is consuming you. And I need you to be completely empty so that I can pour into you what I have for you and what I have for this young lady. And so I get off the freeway, I'm about 90% like there. I'm still, I still got an attitude a little bit. Like me and God, that's how we talk. And he can handle my, my, my attitude, you know? <laughs> He's like, all right, I know you, you're different. <laughs> uh, so I'm heading up sunset and all these miraculous reminders are popping up of just who God has been in my life, like personal stories of the miraculous that he's done with my son, that he's done with my sister and her miraculous, like babies, uh, fertility stories and all this stuff. And, and, uh, the Lord says, go get, stop and get her a salad, get this young lady a salad. I'm like, all right, get her a salad, get to the hospital, give her the salad. And I, I find out that I'm the only visitor that she's had since she's been there. And I can't imagine um, going through what she was going through by, by myself. And then when I gave her the salad, it was like, I gave her a million bucks. And the Lord was like, see, that didn't even cost you anything. Like the very thing that cost you, like this whole trip was like $20 and it cost you a little bit of time, but it meant the whole world to her. And, um, and so anyways, we find out that she has to have emergency brain surgery and quickly find out that she has zero family that can step in to help. And all four of her kids, she tells me when I get there, I don't know where my kids are. And all I can do is trust God. And I'm like, I don't know what that would feel like if I didn't know where my babies were. So I get on the freeway and I call my husband. I'm like, hey, this is what's going on. I got put in the reject pile. I don't want to be over there anymore. <laughs> and so, so, and this is the problem in these babies need help while their mommy is in the hospital trying to heal. And so my husband's like, you already told her that you could take these kids, didn't you? I was like, no, I, was, <laughs> I, I asked you first. And he's like, what am I going to say no to that? And so literally four hours later, we transformed our whole house and um, our whole community pulled together 
And um, we have two of the four kids right now living with us. They've been here for about four weeks. And then um, their mom is, um, she had emergency brain surgery and uh, just having, yeah, just having, having a yes in our spirit. And what's attached to it is someone's freedom, someone's breakthrough, someone's deliverance, someone's healing. And, uh, and so, yeah, she's, she's, and I, I, if you have extra, I will volunteer your extra any day. Tiffany and Andre were like, we'll go buy some shoes for the kid. Um, and here's an outfit. And it's like many hands make the little life. Like I told my mom and dad, I was like, Hey, and they're like, yep, bring her over here. So when, when the young lady gets out of the hospital, she goes and stays with them at their house. And I'm reminded of the Samaritan where, you know, all these people must have walked by and seen this person hurting and just wondered why are they like that or I would help but I don't have enough um but what I know about Jesus is he was thorough with his love and we're called to be thorough with our love and um and that means like going the distance that means you know taking them to the end dusting them off cleaning them up what do you need feeding them clothing them and then and then paying their way and then and they'd say, call me. If you run out, I got extra. And I believe 100% that um, when we have a, a, a lifestyle of worshiping, being tapped in yeah. and authentically being tapped in. Um, and I think that this like speaks to so many times we as believers are trying to find a lane as a worshiper in the regard of I don't know how to sing. I don't know how to play an instrument. I don't know how to, you know, perform or, you know, and, and for people like me, I'm lyrically challenged. I'll make up words in a second. Like <laughs> the words will be right on the screen. I'm like, I don't know how I just remix. <laughs> but the worst, there's a worshiper in all of us. And if we tap in, if we find a way to tap in and really hear the, the voice of God and say, God, what do you have? What would you have for me to do? The flip side of that is someone else's freedom, our own freedom first, because he's coming to set up so that the captain's free. He starts with us. And then like there is, and we have a saying in our home where we're like, as Saxons, we have to be so full in our own home. So ministry defined starts in our own home. We have to have so much that we have enough to spill out into our community, our church and others. And we have more than enough. And I just like back to what you guys were saying, just um, not having that scarcity mindset of, um, like my trauma is so, so big and my hurt and is so like our healing is attached to a, oftentimes when we just make a move and, and what we consider overextending ourselves really leaves room for God to expand our capacity and pour into us his Holy spirit. And when we have, and we're full of his spirit, there's the power source. And that's where the supernatural takes place. And you can't define that. Like you can't put, you can't quantify it. You can't put no, like, Yes, yeah, supernaturally, we are doing things that we never thought we could do. Like right now, I, we got a whole two-year-old in our house. And I'm going, I never thought I would be back here. <laughs> um, but God is good. And so, yeah. Anyways, we've, we've been so over. <laughs> we're going over time. But I love y'all. And yeah. I love y'all all day. Um, before we move on, because I think we're going to wrap this up. Um, I just feel in my spirit, um, Michelle, if you would encourage people who are listening, men, women, the like, um, who may be in a place right now where they feel they're in darkness, they're just meandering through and they don't know which way to go. And just in, um, if you would just encourage or even prayer or have the Holy Spirit, um, you know, lead you through this moment, um, just encourage them, um, uh, you know, they may be feeling like their whole world is just in darkness and they're more concerned with their trauma and their more and their issues and their family life and their what they don't have and what have you, and they're not being connected with God. So would you just encourage the people? Yeah, I, I would love to, Tiffany. Thank you for that. Um, that sensitivity, as you started speaking, I thought, oh, yes. Um, I started seeing a picture of... Um, of some of you listening where, where you're just, you feel paralyzed. You're like, where do I even go from here? Um, and you feel like there's darkness all around. You're hearing these testimonies. You're hearing this, these stories. You're here because you want to know what it means to live a life of worship. 
And I felt like, I felt like uh, just this encouragement to go ahead and sit and behold the grandeur of who God is. Um, you know, worship is a response of beholding the fact that he's worthy of worship. So when we understand who God is, our response is worship. And when we understand, and then, and then when we understand who we are because of what he's done, our response is worship. So we were created to respond in that way when we behold his, his, his grandeur. And I felt like that's the first starting point that I want to encourage you with. The second thing I would say is if you're not sure what to do, just start creating with the one who is the creator that we were created in the image of God. And so often the reason we stay stuck is because we're unwilling to create with him. And yeah. I don't mean paint, although it could be that I don't mean do pottery, although it could be that I mean, creatively, um, creatively design your future, creatively strategize with the Lord and start taking the steps forward by faith. Um, I want to encourage you that God cannot steer something that is not in motion. So go ahead and start taking the steps of faith. I believe so many of us in the body are called to begin to take quantum leaps in the spirit. Like yeah. right now for such a time as this, it's time to get going. I really, really believe um, so many of us have been stuck and it's time to start walking forward in the calling and purpose that he's placed in our lives. So just start somewhere, but you have to go. Yeah. You have to go and you have to go in faith. And as you go in faith, it is the thing that is pleasing to the Lord. And yes, host his presence. Yes, allow him to, to steer and course correct you. But staying still is not an option. And I just, you know, as you were, as you were sharing Torah and, and, and this whole call, I keep thinking about um, just the fact that, that it's so inspiring. The Lord wants to use our lives, but we have to get in motion. We have to do the thing that's right in front of us. And if you feel like you're not sure what to do, or you don't, you're not feeling his, his voice or his nudging, then my encouragement is to go back to the last thing he told you to do. Amen. Mm -hmm. Because maybe there's some disobedience going on. So do the thing he told you to do. But then start moving forward. And, and the last thing I want to just remind everyone of is we are not living for treasures in this world. Amen. We are storing up our treasure in heaven. I love Paul says life is but a vapor. It, it yeah. goes by so fast. And we, you know, we're, the, the scriptures tell us that we're running a race and God is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. And it happens by faith. That's the only thing that's going to be pleasing to him. So run, take steps in faith. Let it be pleasing to the father. I'm, I'm going to pray for you, but um, store up your treasure in heaven. Not what the earthly rewards can, can bring us. Trust God that he is your provider. That he is the best manager. Um, that he is cre a creative God who created you to be creative. And it's time to get to getting because we need to be being the bride and being the church. Like what you've just heard my sisters talking about doing, like we need to be about our father's business. And, mm -hmm. and Jesus was the best example. He only did what he saw the father doing. And he only said what he heard the father saying. So let's take steps in faith with, as the Holy spirit is leading us. And, um, and we got this, we got this. So, so father, I just bless those that are listening. I thank you, Lord, for even the nudging they're getting right now in their spirit, man. Yes, God. To take that next step of faith. They might not even know what, it, what is going to happen. The third, fourth, fifth, sixth step, but they know steps one and two. Father, I thank you that you will continue to make the path known, that you will continue to illuminate the steps beyond that. But I pray, Father, for just the courage and the boldness to get moving in you. And I thank you, Lord, that they can do it afraid. That's the definition of courage. Mm. And I thank you, Lord, that you are here to heal, but that is not going to stop them from moving forward in what you had, the pain from the past. They're going to look forward in the truth of who you are and what you called us to be. So I bless those that are listening in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Woo, what a, 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 a 
So good. Uh, listen, ladies and gentlemen, we uh, we apologize. We went over a little bit on that time, but we're not really sorry because God um, did what he wanted. <laughs> sorry, <not> sorry. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, we're not sorry. Uh, God has been great. Thank you, Michelle, for taking this time out of your uh, incredibly busy schedule, um, but just to pause and thank share you. with us. Uh, thank you, Tiffany, um, for your words of encouragement. And um, it's just, it's, this was just good. And we want to have you back, um, Michelle, uh, you're, you and your husband, you guys are just amazing. We love you guys. Love and you. Uh, you guys, uh, those of you who are, are watching with this, remember, tune in on Tuesday nights at 7 o'clock p.m. Uh, on YouTube at the Foundation CM on all the social media handles. Um, God bless you and uh, like and share this with people, especially those who are worshipers, because this was an unconventional conversation that talks. We're talking about lo worship, um, so we just we're so grateful and uh, yeah. God bless you, uh, and we'll, we'll see you next Tuesday at seven o'clock. Bye, Bye, everybody! Thank you so much, guys. Bye. Thank you. Bye.